What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Accelerate Your Life podcast. I am your host, as always, Mallory Marks, and I am solo today. Okay, just me. Sorry, you're stuck with just me. But that is because we are going into another edition of Fast Fit Facts, which this is, I think, our this is our episode two of Fast Fit Facts, not episode two of the podcast, but of Fast Fit Facts. Um, and if you are new to Fast Fit Facts, basically, I just wanted to sprinkle some quicker episodes, though the last one ended up being the longest episode we've had so far, but a couple quicker episodes into the podcast that are just delivering you very forward-facing fitness and nutrition, facts, truths, answers to questions you might have, clears things up for you, disproves a lot of diet culture crap. Like I just, uh, uh, one thing I wanted from this podcast when I first started it was to be a place for people to come get no bullshit, health and fitness, advice, tips, tricks, facts, all that stuff and not feel confused because I think it's just been so overcomplicated in today's world. Um, And my mission in life, truly, what I think I'm meant here to do is to uncomplicate it for a lot of people, specifically women, show them the truth behind it. And that the truth typically tends to empower them to actually feel stronger, eat more, do the things that's going to make them feel their best. So that is what Fast Fit Facts are for. And today we are going to be diving into everything macronutrients or macros for short, which If you are listening to this podcast, I assume you found me through something health and fitness related, and therefore I'm sure you've heard at some point the word or term macros. And maybe you're a little bit more advanced and you totally understand macros. Maybe you track them already yourself. And if you do, this podcast episode is for you. If you don't, if you have no idea what the hell macro is, this podcast episode is still for you. That is exactly what we are going to be breaking down today is everything from what the heck even is a macro to understanding the difference between macros and calories, understanding each macronutrient and what they do for your body. But we're going to keep it pretty, sorry, I just hit the mic. Hopefully that wasn't a loud boom, but we're going to keep that pretty, a pretty like baseline and just give you the basics. But even again, if you are somebody who knows what these you know, macros are and you're tracking them yourself, I think you can still very much benefit from this episode by being reminded the foundations and why we care about this. Because I think one trap a lot of people can get into with macros is just hitting the number and not thinking about the nutrition behind it and making sure we're making the right decisions for what we're fueling our body with. And if you're new to this, that might not make sense right now and it will by the end. So either way, wherever you're at in your fitness journey, I'm happy you're here and let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, we need to start with the basics. What the heck is a macro? Okay, macro, the word macro, the term macro is short. It's basically a nickname for the word macronutrient. And it's, if we look at that word, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is the nutrients we need in the most quantity, macro, right? So it's going to be the things that our body needs in the largest amounts to function optimally. So we can compare this to its opposite of micronutrients, which would be the nutrients that our body needs in the least amount of quantity. Now, it doesn't mean that macros are more important than micros. Um, It just means that we need greater amounts of macros. And micronutrients, we just don't need as much of them, but getting that amount that we do need is very, very important. So understanding that and what that term macronutrient means. And then there are three macronutrients and that is going to be protein, carbs, and fats. So again, we need protein, carbs, and fats in greater quantities than we need micronutrients, which examples of micronutrients, and we'll do probably another episode on that would be like vitamins and minerals. We know vitamins are so important. We just don't need 100 grams of vitamin D. We might need like 100 milligrams, right? So it's just the actual quantity. That's why we term it macro micro. It has nothing to do with the importance per se of them. So that's what macronutrient is. And then the three macros are protein, carbs, and fats. We need these in the most amount of quantities. Now we're going to dive into protein, carbs, and fats and understanding them each in their own realm a little bit more, which if you are coming from any sort of diet culture background, that's the part that's going to be really crucial for you. You might have some fear around carbs. You might have some fear on fats. Hell, you might have some damn fear around protein because every freaking macronutrient has been uh, demified. Is that a word? Demo, demon, Ben, uh, my brain's not working. It's been vilified at some point. And that's typically because it is good for marketing to be anti some sort of macro and then create a lot of diet products around it. So keep that in mind. Um, always be skeptical of some of the things like that out there. Cause usually it's coming from some sort of market money, marketing, money-making standpoint, 
But anyway, we will get to that. So before we do, though, I want you to understand the difference between macros and calories, because you may hear people talking about counting macros. You maybe hear people talking about counting calories. Is it the same thing? Are they different? Which is better? Let's chat about it. Okay. Calories come from macronutrients. So they're not the, they're, they, they're not, it's kind of like calling a square a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Did I say that backwards? Yeah. A rectangle a, no, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle doesn't square. It's kind of similar to that. So macronutrients have caloric value. Calories come from macronutrients. Like protein has caloric value. Does that make sense? So calorie is a unit of energy. Macronutrients is where that energy is coming from from. So for example, protein, one gram of protein has four calories. So they, it's like calories come from macros, but macros aren't calories. I hope that is making sense. Um, it's kind of the best way I can use to explain it. Um, so again, one gram of protein has four calories. One gram of carb has four calories. One gram of fat has nine calories. So calories come from macronutrients. So if you are counting macros, you are counting calories because if you if you are counting and making sure you hit, let's say, 100 grams of protein, well, that means you're getting 400 calories because there are four calories per gram of protein. So if you're counting macros, you are counting calories, but if you're counting calories, you're not per se caring where those where those calories are coming from. And that is why we might want to track calories in st- or sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke. That is why we might want to track macros instead of calories is because it does both. It's counting the calories and where those calories are coming from and we care where those calories are coming from. Okay? Because calories control weight loss and weight gain only. Macronutrients control the type of weight that is gained or lost. Okay. What do I mean by that? All right. If we are in a calorie deficit, we're going to lose weight, but depending on what the makeup of where those calories are coming from, are you eating more protein? Are you eating more carbs? Are you eating more fat? We may lose a combination of muscle. We may lose a common, uh, you know, muscle and fat rather than we probably just want to lose fat, right? Because eating a higher protein diet is going to help us hang on to sorry if you can't hear my dog barking in the back, Um, eating a higher protein diet is going to help us hang on to muscle while we're in a calorie deficit. So this is why you might want to prioritize tracking macros and caring where those calories are coming from. Because overall body composition is influenced by the macronutrients that that, that you are consuming along with the signal that is sent from exercise. So like prioritizing still strength training and stuff like that when you're in a calorie deficit. But if you have a specific breakdown of protein, carbs, and fats, you're going to be able to control where that weight is gained and lost a little bit more than if you're just looking at calories. Because the truth is not all calories are created equally. Um, You can have a hundred calories of chicken and a hundred calories of a brownie, that hundred calories of chicken is those calories are coming mostly from protein, right? And that's going to send a different signal to your body than the hundred calories of the carbs in brownies, right? The protein is going to tell your body, Hey, we want to build muscle. We want to hang on to muscle. We want to be a little more satiated and just straight hundred grams of carbs might. Yeah. We're in a calorie deficit. Maybe if, 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 that amount like puts us in a deficit, but it's not telling our body to hang on to muscle. It's not saying, Hey, don't waste the muscle away with this, uh, with the calories we're burning. So that is why we want to care about the macronutrients. Now let's dive into the three different macronutrients and understanding them a little bit more, um, and why we should prioritize them and what they do. Okay. So the first is going to be protein. This is the best I mean, okay, I don't want to say that. It's not the best. They're all important. They're all equal. And I don't want any to get a bad rap, but protein is the queen. Protein really is the king and queen. It's the king and the queen. Um, And this is because protein is the function of it is the building blocks. It is the building blocks of the body. Okay. It helps you build and maintain lean muscle. It's also important for bodily functions. It has, it's um, an enzyme for bodily functions, meaning digestion, blood clotting, all of those things. Um, It's also important for the structure of cells and tissues and literally anything in your body that has structure to it. Protein is creating that structure and building it. And it provides energy. Like I said before, it's four calories per gram. Um, It has the biggest influence on body composition that we can get from nutrition. Other signals that are going to create 
the body comp we want are going to be strength training, you know, the type of exercise we do, et cetera. But from the aspect we can control with nutrition, protein is going to have the biggest, biggest impact because it sends a signal to your body to maintain and build lean muscle. Um, what else do we want to talk about with protein? Uh, I do think it is important to note though, that while it does provide energy, it's not the primary source of energy for the body. So this is why, um, we do need to have carbs in our diet, because if we, it's not the body doesn't want to utilize protein. It want to use it utilizes carbs, but it can it can. So if we don't have carbs in our diet, um, then what it will do is go and break down lean muscle tissue in order to get amino acids, um, which is going to allow the body to uh, create that energy for the body. But it doesn't want to break down the muscle tissue to do it, but it will, and we don't want to do that. Um, another important thing about protein is it has the highest thermic effect of food. So this means that you burn the most calories digesting this food than you do any other macronutrient. So for example, let's say a chicken breast is a hundred calories and it might take 10 calories to digest that. You're actually only observing 90 calories of that, but like fat, for example, doesn't have as high of a TEF thermic effect of food. So you may eat hundred calories of an avocado and you only burn two calories, you know, digesting that avocado. Why is this important? It just, this is why eating a higher protein diet is it's easier to stay lean because you're actually burning a lot of energy digesting that protein. Um, yeah, I think that's a good uh, place to, to stop for protein. I, I guess the last thing would be uh, the recommended amount. So if you are a strength training girly and you are really trying to work on your lean muscle and body composition and being more quote unquote toned, being somewhere closer to that one gram per pound of body weight is going to be crucial. If you're somebody who has a good bit of weight to lose and you're maybe 30, 50, hundred pounds overweight, obviously hitting that one gram per your current weight may be really, really difficult. So looking more at your lean amount of uh, like your lean body weight or what your ideal body weight would be. So if you want to lose about 30 pounds, what's 30 pounds less than where you're at now, that is probably the, the number that I would do the one gram per pound of body weight off of. All right, let's move along to a personal favorite, carbohydrates, who gets a bad rap. Want to emphasize here, carbs are the primary source of energy for the body. They are so important. This is what the body wants to use to fuel your brain, to fuel your um, day-to-day activities, to fuel anything. And so we need to have them in our diet and they provide four calories per gram. So it's the same as protein. Um, I guess the deepest science here I'll get here is just understanding why carbs are important and how they are used for energy in the body. And we're going to take it back to biology class a little bit here. So ATP, adenosine triphosphate is the main currency of energy for the body. Okay. Like that's when you do anything, you're using ATP. So we need ATP in our body to like do things. <laughs> um, so how do we get to that ATP? Well, carbohydrates are, are ingested, you eat them, um, and they're broken down into glucose. That's like the most basic form of a carb. Then that glucose turns into glycogen when we store it. Okay. So we store it in either our liver, our muscle, um, or it can be stored in fat when we have excess. And this is why we don't have too much carbs, but that's just too much carbs and calories. Carbs itself are not the energy, uh, the enemy, but anyway, so then we, when the body is ready to create ATP, it's going to take that glycogen and it's going to use it in one of the energy pathways like the Krebs cycle and all of those ones, great things we remember from biology class. And then boom, ATP is spit out basically. Now, something to note here and why it's so important to have carbs is if they're not present, I was kind of alluding to this prior when we were talking about protein, but if carbs aren't present, the body still needs to make that ATP. So it's going to be like, okay, where the heck else can we get this? And it's going to go over to your muscle and it's going to be like, man, we really don't want to use the amino acids in here. It's so much work to break this down, but we don't have carbs. So we're going to do it. So it breaks down your muscle tissue. It gets those amino acids, which is the, like, you know, how I said glucose is the minimum, like it's the broken down part of carbs. Amino acids are the broken down part of, of protein. So it'll break down the muscle. It's going to get that amino acids. And then they can use the amino acids in place uh, in the energy pathway instead of glycogen, um, glycogen or glucose, however you want to look at it. Um, and it's going to make ATP, but now we broke down muscle in order to do so. And you girlies who want to be toned, that ain't what we want. If we're breaking down muscle, we're not going to have any tone, right? Okay. So this is why we need to have carbs in our diet in order to provide energy and also, you know, promote the body composition we want. Also, I think it's just important to note that other body systems that run on glucose, AKA carbs are your nervous system, your red blood cells, your brain, 
So also probably why you notice when you are restricting yourself, you might have some brain fog and it's not very fun, okay? Because uh, your brain is not getting the glucose that it needs to function. Mm-hmm. What else do we want to talk about with carbs? Um, I guess how much we need since we talked about that with protein. So I will say this will shock some people. The recommended amount of carbs for a human to function optimally is 130 grams per day. So any of you keto girlies out there who have been trying to stay under like 20, this is why you probably feel brain foggy and bleh, uh, at least for a little bit until your body adapts because we need this to function. Um, I would, if you are somebody who is strength training and pretty active, definitely, definitely probably bumping this. I like to base it more off of the total amount of like calories you're consuming in a day, um, and make it more of a percentage. So around 50% of the total amount of calories you're consuming should probably come from carbs. Um, so that is that one other note would be a lot of people fear carbs because they feel like it makes them gain weight. They might have some one night and then the scales up. We need to understand why this is happening. Okay. It is not because you just gained pounds from eating those carbs. Like you didn't gain fat pounds. What happens is glycogen like stores water, it pulls water into your cells. And remember glycogen is the storage form of carbs. So when you eat a carb, it's broken down to glucose. And then we store that glucose. It's pulling water in to the cell with us for every one gram. It brings in three grams of water. That's why we see weight fluctuations. It's just non-permanent water just coming into the cell while that glycogen is being stored. It's going to go away. It's going to, you know, we're going to use that glycogen to create that ATP in a little bit when the body's ready to do so, that water's going to go away. So that's why we have these fluctuations. Okay. Carbs do not inherently cause weight gain. They cause a little bit of maybe water retention that is short term. And if we over consume any macronutrient, we're going to gain weight. It's not the carbs per se. So I think that that ends the little rant here on carbs. And then we'll finish up with a personal fave too. They're all personal fave. I love them all. Um, And that's going to be fats. Another one that's gotten a bad rap at points because, you know, people associate fat with being fat. And this is not the case. Again, any macronutrient consumed in too much quantity can lead to weight gain. But fats are extremely important because the functions of fats are going to be supporting your metabolism, helping your cells communicate, cell signaling. Um, They really help with immunity. So if you find yourself getting sick a lot, you might want to look, do you have healthy fats in your diet? Um, And then they are crucial for hormone production. So most of my listeners here are females. I need you to understand how important fats are for hormone production, hormone signaling, um, and then also being able to absorb nutrients too, because we, there's we haven't done the micros one yet, but when it comes to micronutrients, there is water and fat soluble vitamins, fat soluble vitamins means we need fat to dissolve them, to digest them. So we need fat in our diet to get these nutrients to, to digest these vitamins. So they're really important. Um, now they are denser than carbs and protein. They provide nine calories per gram. So we can't have them in as great of quantities. Like I said, the RDA for carbs is 130 grams of fat. So that would be a lot of fat, you know, or sorry, it's 130 grams of carbs that if we were to have 130 grams of fat, that might be a lot. So it's not, we don't need them in as much quantity, but they're still extremely important. Um, we probably need closer to like Again, it's very dependent on the person. I would want to do more of a percentage of your total calories, which would be probably like 20 to 35%. But for females overall, like a minimum, I never take our clients lower than like 50 grams. That would probably be a minimum for optimal hormonal health. Um, Probably closer to like anywhere from like 50 to 80 is going to be a good place for most females. Um, I think that's honestly it on the fat side of things. It's pretty simple. Um, they are, they don't make you fat again. I think the overall thing I want people to take away from this episode is that all three macronutrients are extremely important to overall health. They all provide value. Fats are really important for hormones. Carbs are really important for energy. Protein is really important for structure of our body composition and our internal, um, cells, bones, anything that has structure. So we need to make sure we're getting adequate about of all of them and not restricting any of these within our diet. And then the last big takeaway would be if we are going to track for intake uh, purposes, for overall health purposes, for body composition purposes, I would definitely lean more towards tracking macros rather than just calories. Because remember, if you are tracking macros, you are tracking calories. But we at least we're we're almost taking a little bit of a deeper look. You're with calories, you're at a bird's eye view, view macros, you're like really getting in there and seeing, okay, do I actually have the right types of foods for me and nutrients for me to reach the goal 
that I want to reach. So that's kind of the overall takeaways from this episode. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to add. I think that is it. And I guess the bigger thing too is just like, again, I, I mentioned at the beginning, especially if you're a um, more seasoned vet with tracking macros, don't forget to think about where these things are coming from. It is a step up to now go ahead and look at macros rather than calories. Cause now again, you're prioritizing like getting enough protein rather than and, and getting enough, you know, carbs and fats rather than just like wherever those calories are coming from. But don't forget the next layer too of, because you can also get enough protein from a lot of processed protein powders and bars and protein pop tarts and whatever the heck they have out there those days, still be conscious of where you're getting them from. We still want to prioritize whole foods, um, you know, animal products, dairy, other plant products that have high protein, same thing with carbs, like get your carbs from fruit, from leafy vegetables, from, um, things like potatoes rather than, you know, from cereal and things like that. Not to say those are bad foods and we can still have them, but just be conscious where the majority of these macronutrients are coming from. So that is everything I have for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope this was a a helpful episode of the fast fit facts. If you guys like these, let me know and we'll keep them going. And I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon.